Hi there and welcome back to the channel and like I already said in the 4k announcement videos Here's some sub replays Pretty much the easiest way to get clicks on YouTube so If you want to get featured Put your uh, replays in the discord server and with a little bit of luck you'll be in the next video And also don't forget to like because that's how greedy I am these days Anyways in the first game we have um, Ed here in the SU-12244, I believe, a T-7 Premium Soviet tank destroyer, and if you hear the Soviet word Soviet, you might already think that this is going to be a pretty epic battle, because there's a, I think, 120-something millimeter gun, at least it does 400 damage, that's all I know, so it does a lot of boom, it's pretty mobile, and it has a Highly sloped front plate, which means you can bounce a lot of shot in it. Unlike that Sturemo that he just hit, it has no armor and no mobility, so... Yeah... But, uh, I'm not too sure about that, but... You, you, you might call this tank overpowered, but then again, it's, it's a non turreted tank destroyer. So if you get a VK-28 or an LTTB on your ass, you got a problem. But that's not gonna happen in this game. It is just chilling on, on this corner. And getting some damage in that helpless Churchill. Because this thing's putting out damage. I don't know the exact figures because I have no clue about this tank whatsoever. But what I can say is that it's a good one. So if you're looking for a very, very good tank destroyer, this is definitely a pickup. So now it has a problem here because there's two thirty four ones trying to flank him. And one thing that you can always do, or try to do in a tank destroyer, is to get your ass up against hard cover that may be a bunker that may be a rock that may be just a hill so that they can't flank you but of course that um t-34 made the mistake of just dropping down the hill and giving him the advantage of turning around he misses the shaft but in the end the su's armor is just too strong the t-34 can't pen him and ed's just gonna finish him off because that's how it works these days and to be honest sub replays is also a very very it's it's a it's a nice thing because I can use somebody else's achievements and put him up as mine, sort of. So that's very nice. But let's not take it away here. It's a two v forward now in this situation, so it will have to do a lot of work here and also will have to get this win for his now non-existent team as he is in a one v four. So, can he win this? Can he win this? Can he? He finished off the AMX, so now it's only a 1v3, and if he does win it, then he has a color bond of secure 2, that is for a 1v3, but this then would be a 1v4. And the MT25 is an easy target too, he doesn't even look at him, and he's finished off as well. Now, already 5 kills, so this would also be the Xenai's hero medal if he does indeed finish this game with a victory. If it wouldn't be, then it most likely wouldn't be here, but let's keep watching. The URDC last two enemies are pretty healthy, so he'll have a lot of work to do. He won't be as easy as finishing off those two um, low HP light tanks. Now, another T7 tank destroyer rolls up. That is the T25 2. It has no armor. But it has a gun that is capable of penetrating the SU. So he has to play it safe here. And even though the SU had a lot less HP, he wins the fight without a problem simply because it's Russian. It has armor, it has a gun. Like, this tank is insane. But also, it is not only because the tank is insane, but also because of the insane skills. Of our contestant right here. There's nothing to take away from that. And now the final boss of this game. 1v1 against the KV3. Now, what you can already see is that the KV2, KV3 actually doesn't seem too skilled because he just shot into the ground for no reason. And it just sets him on fire. Now another thing that you might see is that he ha does not have the 400 damage gun. So that's also a very big point. And you see they had 280 points bounced, so he would have survived that anyway. And now he has the advantage. Uh, and then, he just finishes him off. That's an epic game right there. 
I couldn't do that. That wouldn't be that good, but as you can see right here, 5,000 damage, pretty much every metal that you, you could want. Kolobanos, Resinai. So, 5k damage in a T7, that's just insane. L l look at those damage numbers, like... 7,000 overall, and 5,000 of him. That's a lot. And now, we get into the second battle of this video, played by... Uh, Another member of my Discord server, so again, if you want your replays featured, join the Discord, put your replays in the replays channel, and I'll put them up. Because I'm running out of content and I need something to upload, so give me replays. <laughs> so yeah, Jaden here is playing in the um, so-called shit barn, otherwise known as the FB4005 on Dynasty's Pearl, one of my most hated maps. In Blitz, I think in Blitz it's safe to say to, to call this tank the Clip Barn because of its overloading capability. It doesn't have the same gun as the 183, like in PC, so this kind of makes it unique. The FV is not really a good tank for a city map, simply because it has 14mm of turret armor and the turret is bigger than a barn. So you have to really watch out what you're doing with this vehicle. Now, Jaden is taking a pretty good position here. He can get shots into both sides of these corridors. Amoishin misses him. And he tries to shoot him, but he has not reloaded yet. Because the reload on this thing is quite long. However, you do pack 460 alpha per shot, so... You do gotta reload a while. And now, well, you shouldn't miss those. You shouldn't do it like me. See? Don't... Look at don't don't look at my play. Don't don't take me as a role model. I like to know scope. Don't do that. Aim your shots, guys. Aim your shots. Aim your shots. And now he's about to reload, and now he's up against this VK right here. And there you, there you can see the true power of the other lower one, two, and three. He was really healthy before. Now he's not. Hey, Jaden, has to wait half a week, half an hour. To reload, but that's okay, because you can duck back into cover and be safe for now. Now the VK shoots. This is his chance to just peek out and take him down. There we go. Simple and easy game right there. This is not as a hot carry game as the last one, however. It is still a pretty nice game, even though you missed some shots there. But that happens to all of us. But then again... This is basically just to illustrate how, how you can also use this tank on a city map. Because it's really hard to do because he doesn't have a lot of armory. And you have to peek your angles carefully. As you can see here, he's got to wait for the reload to peek. And he's carefully looking around the corner. And there's an E75. It kind of extends a little bit too much right here. But that's just how it goes. Ignore the Discord messages. That's happened when I recorded it. And now the E75 is dead. And one shot. Kinda not goes into the Sheridan. But I think the people in that house were kind of happy of that present of a 150mm shell. Or something like that. Um, and now the Sheridan. He misses again. But that's just casual gameplay right there. And he finishes them off. There we go. Nice damage. 4000 in a city map. That's really good for the FA. So, don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to send me more subscriber replays because I'm actually running out of ideas, out of good ideas that I'm, I want to make that are, don't take 10 hours. But yeah, thank you for watching, see you in the next one, and goodbye.